2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Amen. Let's notice 2 Corinthians 4. Going to look at verse number 3 and verse number 4. Remember, our theme this year is a Christ-minded church. According to Philippians 2 and 5. Remember, if we're going to have the mind of Christ, Paul said, let this mind be in you. So it's something we have to allow. It's something we're not going to fight this year. We're not going to resist having the mind of Christ. Christ, according to John 1 and 1, is the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So Christ is the word. We're going to have a mindset that's centered upon Christ or the word. Amen. But if it is to be that way, we have to allow it to be. We have to desire the mind of Christ. We have to desire it. But one thing we want to we want to let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. But this morning I got an assignment to deal with what we don't want to allow to happen. You know, there are some things you want to permit to be so, but at the same time in your life, there are some things you don't want to permit this to be so. I don't want to allow this right here to happen. So I'm going to deal with that again. In reference to our mind. 2 Corinthians 4. Don't let me lose. It's too important this morning. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse number 3. Notice carefully what Paul says to the church at Corinth. 2 Corinthians 4 verse number 3. Paul said, but even if our gospel is veiled or hid, it is veiled or hid to those who are perishing or lost. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Who is the image of God should shine on them. But even if our gospel. We know the gospel is the good message the gospel is the good message or the good news the gospel is the word of god the gospel is the redemption and salvation we receive through jesus this is the gospel again the good message notice again what paul is saying but even if, notice what Paul said, our gospel, our gospel. See, Paul had owned the gospel. It, it, it was a part of him. It was who he was. But he said, but even if our gospel, the good message is veiled, if it is hid, it is veiled or hid to those who are perishing or lost. Now, this is what I want us to concentrate on. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Now notice it, here it doesn't say the gods but the God. The God of this age. Notice what the God of this age who is Satan. But it's not limited to Satan. But it is Satan. Notice that Satan through a number of means, and I'm going to deal with some, I mention some. Notice what he does. He blinds the minds of people. Do y'all see it? He blinds the minds of people. What are we dealing with this year? Our minds. Our minds. And, and if you know you're one of the ones, as I said earlier, who... More money going to pass through your hands this year in one year than it has ever been. Don't you want to have your mind right? Don't you want your mind to be in the place it need to be? When you go to making decisions, making purchases, and doing what you do, don't you want your mind to be in the perfect place of right in the will of God? One of the worst thing to have to happen is, is for you to receive money, resources, and favor, but you ain't got your mind right. When you're blind, you're in darkness. 
We already teaching. When you're blind, you're in darkness. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, whose image of God, notice what it should shine on them. And so this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject. Don't let Satan blind your mind. Don't let Satan blind your mind. Tell the subject to a neighbor this morning. Tell my subject this morning. Don't let Satan blind your mind. Tell it to one more person. Tell him or her. Don't allow Satan to blind your mind. Now add this to him anymore. Amen. Let's give God a praise for the subject this morning. Come on. Let's give him a thunderous hand. A praise. Hallelujah. Don't let Satan blind your mind. Now, the mind, again, represents intellect. The mind represents intellect. Intellect being the ability to think. The ability to think, the ability to reason, and the ability to understand. When it comes to every single aspect of our lives this year, we want to have the ability to think, to reason, and to understand properly. This is not a year where I want to have the wrong thoughts. And, and, and I don't want to just have wrong thoughts, period. I want to deal with every wrong thought that entered into my mind, and I want to deal with it correctly. Come on, now, now don't, don't slip on that because a lot of times we'll know as saints that a thought is in our mind that's wrong, but we won't fight it. Come on, some of you need to be honest. You won't fight it. And whenever you don't fight the wrong thought that enters your mind, guess what that thought going to do? It's going to linger. It's going to stay there. Why is that bad, Pastor? Because when I don't fight or resist thoughts, that are bad or not of God, then that's going to be what I'm going to focus on. That's going to be where my meditation is. And I'm focusing on that which is bad because I didn't fight it. I didn't fight it. This is the difference between people who depression attacks them, but it never controls them. Come on, it, it never dominates them. Don't ever think if you stay depressed all the time, that you're the only one battling that. No, no, no. It comes to everybody, I believe. Come on. Everything in your life can be wonderful, but you'll go through something to wait to where something is trying to get you down. Now watch this, and you can't put your finger, teach it, Pastor, on what it is you just know that I'm battling today. But you have to fight. You have to fight. Sometimes you got to fight it on your job. You can never have a mind to say, well, this thing attacking my mind. I just got to work. But as soon as I get home, I'm going to avail in prayer. You better listen to me. You, you, you got nine more hours on that job. You got nine more hours. And this is what happens sometimes when people come home and you're like, hey, how you doing? And they kind of like, Rrr. Whatever started attacking them, they never took control of it. This is some good stuff right here. And, and often people like that will take out on others what's going on with them. And you're nowhere in their mind. You don't know what they're battling. But it's like you getting the attitude. Come on. And so, and so when it comes to intellect, again, the ability to think, to reason, and to understand. Now, the mind is also where we generate, we dealt with this on New Year's Eve, where we generate thoughts, ideals, and feelings. We have to be mature enough to recognize when it comes to our feelings, that's your mind. That's your mind. When you feel a certain way, that's your mind. That's your mind. Feelings are connected to the mind. They're connected to the mind. And again, there are times that we know we're battling a feeling. It's not a good feeling. We got a war against that. Come on. I said we got a war against that. Take control. 
take control. Don't allow your feelings to get out of control. Don't allow bad feelings to cause you to make decisions and you know your your feeling is not of God. Or y'all understand what I'm saying? Because some of us we never take control of our feelings and then we go to making decisions. That's one of the worst things I learned that I used to do years ago is be feeling a certain way, which is not good. I know the feeling was not of God. Again, this is going on in my mind. I wouldn't take the time to pray. I wouldn't take the time to get in the word. But then I'll be making what I deem major decisions. And, and, and my feelings are all over the place. Come on. The, the, your feelings also have to do with your emotions. Some people are controlled by their emotions. Now what happens when your emotions are negative? You have to take control. You have to know when, hey, I got to get my mind right. I need to get my mind right. And, some, and for some of us, we can get up with the right mindset, the right feelings. That is a feeling that came from God. This is going to be a good day. Uh -huh. This is going to be a good day. Anybody ever got up there? You did, it was a God thing. This is going to be a good day. I ain't talking about no horoscopes. I'm just talking about God let you know this is going to be a good day. But before you could even get out that door, something happened. Something happened that tried to rob you. Watch this. Of that mindset or that feeling, this is a good day. And it worked on some of us. It worked on some of us. As simple as going to the refrigerator thinking you were going to eat a bowl of cornflakes. Only to find out after pouring the cornflakes, there is no milk. There is no milk. And you say, Pastor, come on. Now for some folk, that just gets the ball rolling. This going to be a day where nothing goes the way I want it to go. Don't say that. Just step back and say, well, maybe I didn't need them cornflakes. Finally, <laughs> the mind is the place where we store wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge and understanding applied. That's what wisdom equate, knowledge and understanding applied. Whenever you get knowledge, whenever you get understanding, you apply it to your life, you operating in wisdom. That's what wisdom is. It is in the mind where we store wisdom. God is speaking to us today. What is he giving us? Knowledge and understanding. What do he want us to do with that? Store it up. Retain it. Retain it. One of, and, and you have people that say, well, Pastor, you know what? I battle re retaining the word. I, I can't remember the word. I can't remember what was preached. Well, well, first of all, you need to stop saying that. You need to stop saying that. And you, and you need to start meditating and speaking what God puts in your being. Amen? And so when we look at the gospel or the word of God promises, I want us to receive this morning that the gospel is hid to those who hear it regularly and sparingly. The gospel is hid to those who hear it regularly and sparingly. When I deal with folk hearing the gospel sparingly, I'm dealing with sinners. I'm dealing with sinners. And, and, and never think because a sinner doesn't come inside of a church that he or she hasn't heard the gospel. Come on, don't ever think that way. Well, he ain't been to church in years, but it don't mean God has not dealt with him through somebody. Whether that be the grocery store, dealers, or on the job. God has a way of allowing people to hear a good message. What they do with it is up to them. But the gospel, when we look at this world, certainly it is veiled when it comes to sinners. And this is the reason so many people, including many of our loved ones, can hear a good message, whether that be at church or from somebody, including you, but they will not respond to that message. It's as if what you're saying to them is bad, but you know in actuality, what I'm saying to my cousin is good. If he'll listen, if he'll put it into action, he can get off the drugs. She can be free of living the way she's living. She can overcome poverty if she would listen to me. My family, my cousin's family can come out of certain things if they will listen 
and receive the gospel. But it's as if when you speak the gospel, it's here. They're blind. Their minds are blind to it. Anybody deal with folk like that? And again, it ain't like you telling them nothing wrong. You telling them what is right. I wonder how many parents in here, you're giving your grown children the gospel. You're giving them a good message. But they're blind. They're blind. They're acting as if you're trying to control their life. But what you're giving them is that which can turn their lives around. But it's here to them. It's veiled. I know I'm right about it. But the sad thing is when the gospel is veiled to those who hear it regularly. That means these are people getting one message after the other that's a good message, but you look at their life and you don't see where they're putting that good message into action. This is a problem in the church. This is a problem. The reason why some of us don't believe God is because we received the word but it's as if Satan, demons, or people possessed by demons have blinded our minds. That's when some of you can receive a good word, but you'll leave church behaving as if you haven't received a good word. Why? Because when it came to that good word released to you, your minds were blinded. And when your mind is blinded, you're not going to operate in the light. You're going to operate in ignorance. Woo! You're going to do things that you know better. Come on. And I know in this church, there are some people that make decisions and they know better. They know better. It's some folks in this church make decisions that are jacking up their lives, ruining their lives, giving them anything but productivity, and God has gave them a good message. But they are not changing. They're not changing. And, and it's as if their mind has been blinded. You have to be careful who you hang around. You have to be careful who you listen to because demons use people. Woo! I said demons use people. Demons use people. Demons speak through people. In order to blind the minds of God's people. That we'll be in a situation that's what I deem a God situation. Something that only God can work out. Something that only he can make better. But we're in that situation and we're not trusting him. We're not speaking what he told us to speak. We're not doing what he told us to do. Why? Because your mind has been blinded by or to the gospel or the good message. And sometimes as you turn to Ephesians 4, you will see a child of God doing something and you'll wonder why are they doing that? It's not the season to do that. Their minds are blind to the season they're in. Why are they not moving and it's time to move? They're blinded to the season that they're in. Come on. And you have to be careful because there are times that you'll see a person moving because God told them to move. Yet when you look at their life, come on pastor, when you look at their circumstances, you, you don't see why they're moving. You, you don't see how it's going to work out for them. But because they're not blinded by Satan, they're moving because God said to move. And to move right now. To move with urgency. To move knowing you have a destination. Move knowing that I'm going to work it out. Move knowing that it's going to get better. Move knowing that it's your year. That it's your season. But you have saints receiving a good message, but they're blind. They're blind. 
And a lot of times, I mentioned on New Year's Eve night, now we're going to the scripture, Ephesians 4 and 27. Notice the God of this world blinds the mind of people. And when you think about it, he pretty much has the sinner. Come on, don't, don't act like that. Pastor, how you know that? Used to be one. Used to be one. And Satan blinded my mind. You look at me right now, you ask me, Pastor, why you didn't get saved earlier? I was blind. In the club, chasing women, shooting dice. Thought that was a lie. Broke, paycheck to paycheck. But you mentioned me something about Christ, the gospel, blind, blind. Don't look at me like that. I'm not the only one. Look at me. I said, don't look at me like that. He wasn't the only one who used to be blind. Some of you ain't had a dice in your hand, but what was in your hand? Come on. Some of you ain't ever drunk a beer. But what was you getting high on? Some of us were high on pride. We were drunk on pride. Thinking we know everything. That's how now God will have somebody come into the church. He's talking to them about the gospel, the good news. And they'll sit right up in church blinded. Just like we used to be. That's when you have to let folk know periodically that, hey, I used to be blind. Woo! But how many can say, but now? Come on, somebody. Y'all should have finished that. I used to be blind, but now? 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 I'm finna drop one on you. Now I see things that used to look bigger than me. They're small to the God that I serve. Now I see. I used to say I couldn't afford stuff, but now I see. What do you see? I see my God is bigger than my circumstances. I see that the earth, you better help me preach it, is the Lord's and the world and those who dwell therein. You better look at me and say, now I see. Can I tell you something else I see? That I didn't used to see. That a pill had to heal me. A doctor had to heal me. But now I see. Woo. You can just ask God to touch your body and he'll touch it. You can ask God to strengthen your body and he'll strengthen it. We ain't always had that mind, have we? You only live in the way you live in now because you see. Several things can go wrong throughout the day. But now I see. You see or say, this is the day. I choose or I will rejoice. Watch this. And be glad what? Therein. That means within that day. No matter how much go wrong. Now I see. Some of you better get this. Or like you were blind last year, you're going to be blind this year. Don't do like you did last year. A lot of times we came to church, we, we heard the message. You heard exactly what God wanted you to have, but you were blind to it. I don't want to be blind when God is speaking. I, I just don't want to hear his voice, but I want his voice to just feel, watch this, or occupy the space in my mind with his thoughts. You know how different lives would be if, if the space within your mind was occupied with God's thought, with the word? Man, you'd be armed and dangerous. Ephesians 4 and 27, nor give place. Notice what Paul tells the church, Ephesians 4, 27, nor give place to the devil. Don't give him place. Don't allow the enemy to blind your mind. Don't allow him to blind your mind. You hear that? Don't allow it to be so. 
Is he coming to try to blind us? Yes. That word I released this morning, the enemy wants to blind somebody's mind and tell you that's not for you. And again, as Mr. Gamble said earlier, you can look at the world and things that are happening, things that are going on. Satan has blinded people's minds. When you look at our government, the type of stuff they're making legal, the type of stuff they're saying is right now. You know we live in a country where our government is blind. Satan done blinded the government. Moving in the education system and throughout. And people are just blind to the gospel or to the truth. I ain't moving. I ain't going nowhere. I'm not leaving America. As I'm not leaving America. Woo! Because sometimes when y'all land, but sometimes when Satan blinds your mind, you don't stay on course. You, you, you start looking for a way in which you can better something. See, you blinded then. If God tells you he's going to do a thing and he don't give you nothing that you need to do, then you be still. You don't do nothing until he tells you what to do because he's going to work this out. But when your mind gets blinded, you go into that, I got to do it mode. I got to make it happen mode. Look at somebody tell somebody, be honest with yourself this morning. And it may be painful, maybe a wake up call, but nobody, but nobody, but nobody, but nobody has messed you up more than you. Thank you for watching the Making People Productive broadcast with Pastor Leonard D. Cochran of A Place of Refuge, Noonan. To order your copy of today's message, please call the church office at 770-252-252. 3855 and reference the message number listed below. We want to hear from you. If you have been helped, strengthened, or encouraged by the word, let us know. Also, don't forget to connect with us on all of our major social media platforms to receive exclusive information and updates with all things Refuge Noonan. A Place of Refuge Noonan is located in the city of Noonan, Georgia. If you would like to visit us, our worship times are every Sunday at 1015 a.m. on location and live at 1045 a.m. We also have service every Wednesday at 715 p.m. via Facebook and YouTube Live.